All right, a little fun fact before we get started. The first digital camera ever weighed over eight pounds and had a 0.01 megapixel sensor. That's pretty cool, but you didn't know it. Today, we're talking about megapixels and why they may or may not be important to you. But before we do, I picked up an A7R4 at the end of last week. This is my old A7R3. The R4 has got a new shutter. Let me know if you can hear the difference. This is the R3. All right, I'm just wasting my shutter clown now. <laughs> Well, tools not jewels, am I right? <laughs> okay. So the majority of people that come through the store, the average Joe, looking to buy a new camera, they all think one thing, megapixels is everything. I have to have the camera with the highest megapixels because that's, that's what it's all about. And if you know much about cameras, well, you know they're wrong. Kind of. Or maybe not. It really depends who you are and what your needs are. So let's dive into that. So I love a cheeky little analogy. Cars are like cameras or cameras are like cars. We've got our fast cars. We've got our big cars with the big fat engines. We've got the small little zip around cars and we've got the four door family sedan that's good at most things and does it all pretty well. Over in the camera world, we've got our fast cameras. We've got the A92, the 1DX, etc. We've got the cameras with the big engines, the A7R4, 61 megapixel, the GFX 100 megapixel. We also have our small little compact cameras, the compact car, whatever. And we have the standard 24 megapixel family sedan. If you know much about cameras, there is a whole bunch of variety of cameras and they've all got different uses. Basically, every camera has its own specific use. And just as you wouldn't race a four cylinder against a 12 cylinder and call that a fair race, you wouldn't take two cameras and judge them purely off the resolution because you'd be forgetting the application that that camera's actually made for. So what's a megapixel? Well, a megapixel is just a portion of your sensor designed to catch light because all an image is, is light recorded. The less of these you have, the bigger they are, which means the more light you can take in, which means better low light performance. Recently, and when I say recently, the last few days, I had an A7R4 rock up and an A7S3 and I'm pretty bloody pumped. The A7R4. It's a 61 megapixel camera and it's a beast. And this is the A7S3. It's a 12.1 megapixel camera and it's a beast. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Why would someone spend so much money on a 12.1 megapixel camera? And the answer is the megapixels in this camera are 5.041 times the size of the megapixels in this camera. And that makes the A7S3 an absolute low light monster. You can see this here. Look just how clean the A7S3 is at high ISO performance compared to the A7R4. Now having smaller individual pixels is one reason why phones do so poorly in low light situations. When you have 12 or in some cases up to 100 megapixels on such a small sensor, the pixels, instead of megapixels, they're more like micropixels. All right, <laughs> let's forget I said that. But because they're so small, it leads to a really grainy image. Also, this will no doubt be grainy, but check this out. There is zero light at all in my room right now. Have a look at this. So on the flip side, the A7R4 has 5.041 times the amount of resolution than the A7S3. So if you want to print to the moon, this is your guy. Megapixels give us the dimensions of our true image size. When you go into Lightroom or whatever software you use and click view at 100%, that's what it will look like at its true size before making it bigger and blowing things up and degrading image quality. So let's pretend I'm taking a photo with my A7S3 of me holding this ball. If I view that at 100% or its true size, if the ball on the screen and the ball in my hand are the same size, then that's what it's gonna look like when it prints out, a one-to-one -one scale. But let's pretend I took that same photo with an A7R4 that has 5.041 times the resolution. This ball will look more like, more like something like this. Now don't get me wrong, you can still print 12 megapixels and blow them up just fine. You just can't blow them up to the moon like you can on an A7R4 or something like that. 
but if you're shooting for social media, 12 megapixels, that's plenty. And especially because of how good this camera is in low light and a video performance, this might just be the ultimate social media content creator rig. It's epic. So why more resolution? So let's say a job contacts you and they say, dude, we want to take some photos and we want them on billboards, we want bus stops, we want the side of buses, side of trains. Well, 61 megapixels is going to be a hell of a lot better in that situation, especially when we're blowing it up that big. The A7R4 also has pixel shift, which basically takes a whole bunch of images one pixel across at a time using the IBIS system to move the sensor and makes a 241 megapixel image. So that, that is big. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Just note, if you are going to do this, it only really works on stationary objects because essentially, because you're taking multiple images, it's kind of like shooting one photo with a slow shutter speed. If cars are driving by, it's not going to be in all of the photos at once. So you're going to get these real weird kind of blurry, blotchy effects. So portraits, if you can get them to stand still, products and landscape. That's what that's reserved for. All right, let me cut in here real quick and give you my music suggestion of the day. If you are a drummer boy or drummer girl, doesn't matter, go and listen to Bedroom Galaxy by Secret and Whisper. And in particular, one minute and 21 seconds in, there is a drum fill, which might be one of my all time favorite drum fills. It's about six or seven seconds of just absolute joy. And I definitely reckon you should go and check it out after this video, because I need the viewership time. <laughs> All right, back to the video. One of the other major benefits of shooting high resolution images is cropping. So basically you can recompose your image in Lightroom and still maintain a high resolution image. When you're cropping, a lot of people, funnily enough, don't understand that you're actually cropping out megapixels. Go figure, it's pretty obvious, I know. Let's say you take a 61 megapixel image, you wanna crop that down, you've got a 40 megapixel image, still plenty of resolution to print, you know, to the moon. But if you've got an A7S3, and you crop that down, you're gonna to go to like five megapixels, probably not worth printing. Sony has the ability to crop down in camera. Now this will give us the same results if we do this in post. Sometimes I like to do it in camera because it really helps with composition while I'm framing the shot while I'm out there. Now, if I take a 61 megapixel camera and I crop it down to an APS-C size sensor, I'm gonna get myself a 26 megapixel image. If I take myself an A7 III at 24 megapixels, I'm gonna come out with a 10 megapixel image. Now the A7S 3 goes from a 12.1 down to a 5.1 megapixel image. So that's why I'm probably not gonna do that. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, it really helps with getting a bit of extra reach out of your lens. And it's the same as if you cropped it in Lightroom after the fact anyway. Sometimes I really like to do this when I'm shooting surfing or wildlife or anything like that. I've got a 400 mil lens on, crop that, now I've got 600 mil, and that's super handy. You can obviously always do this in post, but I find it really helps with composition if I can see it already in crop mode. So if you're going with Sony, that's a fun little tool to have at your disposal. One other thing to consider if you think high resolution shooting might be for you, a 61 megapixel uncompressed raw file from an A7R4, it's 120 megabytes. That's pretty big. That's what she said. Now, if you think about this, if you've got a 128 gig card, that's just over a thousand photos that that card can now hold, which in the scheme of things compared to other cameras is not much. When shooting larger files like this, you'll need to buy more expensive, faster SD cards or CF cards, depending on what camera you're shooting with, which costs more money. You'll need to have more backup hard drives to store all your images. And ultimately with a file that large, you need a faster computer to be able to handle those file types. So when you're buying a high resolution camera, it's not just investing in one thing. There's all these other things to consider. I bought a CF Express Type A card for my Sony A7S III the other day. It's like 600 something bucks for one card, 160 gig. It's not cheap, but it's what you need to do if you're using these high res cameras, or in that case, high data flow for video. And that's where cameras like the camera I'm shooting on right now comes into play. The Sony a7 III, 24 megapixels. That means your printability is pretty good. It also means your file management is much more reasonable than one of the high resolution cameras. And because it's not quite as high as 40 or 60 megapixel, it means that your low light performance is still pretty damn good. So unfortunately, there is no perfect camera. 
And that's why I'll be rolling around with these two guys. The S3 for all my video projects and probably my main workhorse and the R4 for all my photo needs. Technically, I've got four cameras right now. The A7 III I'm shooting on, the R4, the S3, and I've also got the A7R3 here as well. But the A7 III and the R3 will be hitting our secondhand sights pretty soon. <laughs> I just had to wait for these two to come in. I couldn't, I couldn't be without a camera. <laughs> oh boy. Ultimately, you need to work out what sort of shooter you are. Do you need to be able to print, but also have good low light performance? The A7 III might be right up your alley or something in that 24 megapixel range. However, if you need to print to the moon or just billboards and stuff like that, well, high resolution A7 R3, R4 might be right up your alley. But if you're a low light fiend, the lower resolution light sucking A7 S3 may be just what you're looking for. I really hope I didn't make this too confusing and that you're able to take something out of this and kind of understand a bit more about the differences of a high resolution and a low resolution camera. And maybe it's pointed you in the direction of, you know what, I only like to shoot low light at night. So maybe a camera with a lower resolution is better for me or, you know what, I am printing billboards. I need that A7R4. Wherever it might be, I hope this helped. And if it has, please give it a big old fat thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. It helps smaller channels like me grow. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below what you're gonna pick up, what you have picked up, or what you'd like to pick up one day, and why, I'd be super interested. Anyway, my name's Jed Daybreak. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you leave a chili emoji in the comments and subscribe, I might just eat a chili raw in my next video for you. <laughs> anyway, bye! Mm. All right, I'm gonna go play Rocket League. Bye!